Hello, I am Carla R. Cannon, the publisher and founder of Women of Standard Magazine. I am here live at the We Church with Apostle James Spence. Let's take a moment and give it up for him. <laughs> That's correct. Awesome. So he has recently launched Handling the Destiny Cut. But before we go into that, I want to talk about his first book, Groom for Destiny. So you're here live with us today as we talk to Apostle Smith. So tell me all about Groom for Destiny. This is my moment. <laughs> well, Groom for Destiny is where it all started. Uh, God blessed me with a book dealing with uh, disclosing and writing some of the process and procedures that he brought me through things that I thought would disqualify me to be utilized by God. And at a point, actually, of a kind of desperation, where I really felt unbeknownst to anybody, I felt a sense of unfulfillment and inadequacy. Mm -hmm. um, almost to the sense of saying, God, get somebody else to do this. Because uh, I just don't think I have what it takes. Based upon a set of mistakes in my life I had made, just an imperfect scenario not realizing that God always chooses imperfect people to do perfect stuff. Yes. And so the power of really walking with God is our imperfection. And the Lord spoke to me something profound that evolved into room for destiny. He said to me, I'm taking what you call mistakes and I'm using them as tools to mold you to be right where I want you to be. I have always been planning for this moment. It's Room for Destiny, This Is My Moment. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That is heavy because even with Women of Standard, we talk about transform and Men of Standard. We talk about transforming your pain into power. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what would you, what are some of the things you address in your book for that person that says, you know, my past is too dirty? Or, you know, I'm inadequate, I don't have a degree, I don't have the this, or mama wasn't there, daddy wasn't there. What specifically are you saying to that audience of people? Well, it's interesting. Um, the Lord gave me this beautiful wife called Suzette Spence. <laughs> she is the absolute love of my life. And I brought her up as a precursor to what I want to address with this. One of the chapters in Group for Destiny that I am most pulled to is a chapter called Your Future is Fighting for You. That is a product of an illustrative sermon that I did where I looked at the concepts of how it is not the tragedy or travesty of my past that caused me the most conflict. It is the fact that the enemy is not fighting what's already happened because that's done. And he's really not concerned about my present because that's uncertain. But what he is nervous about is the future that's ahead Jesus. that seems to be inevitable for my life. So I came to my realization that it is not my history that I should be combating. I should realize that I'm only here because my future is actually fighting for me. And so even those who may be watching and listening and participating in this, I want them to know that our futures really have already been foreordained by God. And it's not what we've done, but what we're scheduled to do that has the enemy most nervous. My future is fighting for me. Yes. 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 that man or that woman that finds themselves in an identity crisis, where they say, I hear you say, you know, I got a purpose in life, but they don't really, they're not convinced yet. Yeah. So give them some of what God has put into you. Give that to them right now. God never uses, um, and this is for someone right now who is really in the midst of a paramount moment. God never uses what hasn't been bruised mm -hmm. because God specializes in healing. Mm -hmm. Scars are not moments and marks of pain. They're moments and marks of proof. So someone who has a real scar should understand that that is a moment where you get to say, this is the proof that really I should not go further. But when God does what he says, that proof will then become evidence that God knows how to use somebody who has the kind of past that's damaging. Jesus. So I want you to be encouraged that not only will you recover, but you're right where God wants you. Because he always used unpredictable circumstances 
to bring about extremely epic futures and possibilities. This is a time for you to be groomed. Yes. And God is grooming you for this moment. Yes, he Amen. Is. Now let's transition over. Today, <clears throat> excuse me, you launched Handling the Destiny Cut, Embracing the Power of Process. So yes. we're going to talk about this book. So you transition from Groom for Destiny to Handling the Destiny Cut. Man of God, tell us what that book is about. I will be honest with you, I take no accreditation for it. God is amazing. He is he's a major statistician. I think the greatest chess player ever because he makes one move that affects the whole board. Uh, my son, uh, Devation Woods, has a company called Behold Enterprises. He does all my graphics and my covers, and he put together this concept. After talking to me on my first book, he made what's called the captain's chair or the king barber's chair. He made that my slogan or idiom on the front page. By so doing, he unbeknowingly tapped into the heart of that there will be a next. When we did Groom for Destiny, I didn't know it was going to be a next. But in the midst of a live interview, I was asked about, is this a series? And when I was asked the question, the Holy Ghost showed me the, the, the king chair that he did, and then showed me the next step in the process, and downloaded to me the Destiny Cut. What happens is, you go to a salon, or a stylist, or a barber, and when you sit in the chair, they ask you a critical question. They ask you, what do you want me to do? We then proceed to tell him what we want the outcome to be. Sometimes we even bring photos to say this is our outcome. After we express our outcome, they then engage us on the most paramount part of our appointment with them. They say, all right, I agree with your future, but in order to get you there, I'm going to have to cut the split ends that have made this outcome oh an impossibility. Jesus. So the question they then turn to you and ask, I know you want this outcome, but the real question is, can you handle the cut that's associated with the outcome? The process. And so they don't ask you to embrace the outcome. They ask you to embrace the process, knowing that the outcome is inevitable. Handling the destiny cut is a series of words that God has given me that help navigate us through process. So it cuts us, not to kill us, but it cuts us to cure us and to burn us. Sometimes even in my personal life, and I don't know how many will be honest and contest to it, but sometimes being chosen has felt like a curse. Ooh, yes, sir. 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 Yes, processes that all are designed to engage us into something. Now, don't stall before takeoff. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is while you're waiting, there's a period that seems like there's a stall, when really it is the power of the energy necessary to get you there building up. And if you don't learn to interpret the sound of power that's ordained for push, you'll misinterpret it as being a stall. And God said, I'm not stalling you. I see the process, and I see the pain while you're in the middle, but this is where you get your greatest strength when you're waiting in your worst pain. Jesus. Because God Jesus. knows how to take tragedy and turn it into triumph. Yes. 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 Awesome. Let's give it up for him. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I love about Apostle Smith is he so has the spirit of a father. Yes. 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 Don't even feel intimidated in his presence. You just So in handling the destiny cut, embracing the power of process, I want you to once again look in that camera and talk directly to that person that may say, the, and I'm going to keep it simple, the process is Jesus. killing so feels. I think the key uh, to the furtherance of your next in your life is really to do uh, the simplicity, which is actually profundity, but the simplicity of the title or the subtitle, which says embracing your process. 
We all go through, but we waste the energy of the process fighting the process. Yes. If I learn to marry my process, then I can live the greatness of my outcome. Jesus. So in your process, don't fight the pain. Understand that your pain is legitimate, your pain is authorized, and your pain makes sense. Jesus. But there's a difference between going through something in obscurity and going through something in understanding. Once you get understanding, then understanding moves you to a place of power even before you come out of trouble. Good God. That's yeah. why you can be in jail and already a victor. You can be out of a job and still already a millionaire. Yes. Because you are aware that this is only a part of my go through, not a part of my park in. I'm not parking in what I'm going through. If you're going through it, you are always evolving. You are always moving. Even if it's micro millisteps, you are always moving. Yes. God has not ordained you to end like this. That you have to understand. He said it this way. And I'm going to be biblical for a minute. I know the plans that I have for you. Thoughts that are good and not of evil. That will bring you or give you an expected in. So the question is not who am, who's going through what or what am I going through? The question is, I wonder who's expecting me. Because if I'm expected, I can't stay here because I've got reservations in the future. entitled, since we came up with it being a series, mm -hmm. it's actually entitled The Destiny Series. Mm -hmm. And my staff has put it together where you can go to thedestinyseries.com and you can acquire these books. And guess what? There are more to come from this series. Yes. So get involved now so you won't have to play catch up too bad. It is a major, major release of God. I thank you. I thank you. you. And we're looking forward to being a part of your next. Amen. Amen. Yeah.